completely wrong strategy. You're wasting your time trying to put pressure on the Israeli state, trying to put pressure on Netanyahu. Okay, so if you want to ask me about what strategy to employ, as if I am the king of strategy making, as if you look up to me that way, okay, I will. What would Nathan Abila do as the united front against Zionism? Murdering, committing a genocide against Palestinians, mothers and children. This is in front of the whole world to see. One. Weird. I wouldn't bother with even putting pressure on him. I wouldn't discourse with him. Negotiations, discussions, conversations, outright communication with the Israeli state, at the window. Completely ineffective. You're playing the game they want you to play just by conversing with them. To name. Don't you love that? I would absolutely sabotage all Israeli commercial interests. I would leave all their military interests alone. In every shape, way, or form that Israeli commercial interests can be sabotaged, from their control of the worldwide media, the media in many countries, to their products, to their uh, want of you to be scared of offending them, if that's a part of their commercial interest. It all goes back to their psychological interest. It all goes back to them and them being, able, them being able to control affairs. I would sabotage that. Stay clear of any violence. Stay clear of any violence whatsoever. Attack their commercial interests. It is in their interests for Westerners to believe that challenging them is racism. Challenging them is anti-Semitism. It's in their interest for people to actually believe that bullshit. As if I'm racist because I'm challenging the Jewish state or Jewish persons. Does that make sense? Whether I challenge a Maltese person, whether I challenge a Lebanese person, whether I challenge a white person, it doesn't matter who I challenge, that's not based on racism. It's what the fuck has that got to do with racism? This is what I've been saying since 2014. I've always said it my entire life, but especially publicly. What the fuck? What the actual fuck does challenging a problem, an issue, have to do with racism? You fucking stupid cunts. So this idea of offending them over the Holocaust, this idea of offending them remotely just because you do anything remotely anti-Jewish, do it! Do it more! Do it more than ever. It will aggravate the living fuck out of the Israeli state. That's the aim. That's that, that's that's the target. Not not Jewish persons. That will annoy the Israeli state even more. The fact that we don't have a problem with Jewish persons. The fact that they're Jewish Australians. They're as Australian as I am. They're Jewish Americans. They are they are as American as you are. An Irish American. A, Whatever American you are, an Italian American, the fucking very best of them. It, whatever you are, it, it, that's not the angle. The angle isn't actual racism. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's got nothing to do with racism. You destroy their commercial and psychological interests. You completely annihilate it without, as I said, referring to point we had. You do that without ever entering discussions with them. Let actions be the discourse. Put that. Put what I just said in speech marks and frame that. Let actions be the discourse. Let actions be what makes them change. Your actions. No point in talking. Just do it and make them change. Their behaviour will change because you're not going to their false table, which they want you to go to. It's a circle of fuckery, not a circle of uh, in good intent. Remember that. 
the circle of fuckery is the worst of all sitting at that fucking table. It's the most deceptive of all. It's purposed to send you on circles so they can control your dynamic. So the way around that, since it's not a circle of good intent, is seesaw communication. And let your actions be the discourse. Eventually, with point to name, point two, eventually, if you keep hammering and hammering and hammering, whatever you wanted to tell them in discourse, whatever you wanted to converse with them, whatever you wanted to communicate to them, they're going to do automatically. Because they'll know what you want. They know what your they know what just demands are. Don't go. Don't become unjust. They know what just demands are. So completely obliterate them. Completely fucking annihilate them. They have violence, commercially, and psychologically. Absolutely rip the heart out of Zionism. Completely piss on it. From boycotting to the works, full outright sabotage. No person in the world will take the Israeli state seriously on behalf of what they're doing to Palestinians. This is 2024. We've been hammering people who have committed genocide for a very long time now. And they're committing one right in front of our faces and calling it something else and saying, we are above everything. That's what they're saying. It's from their mouth. Okay, if they're above everything, then guess what? They're also... Away from this, you can't play two games. You can't. If they're above everything, well, they can't claim to want fairness now with the that strategy. So that's the strategy. That's how you take on the Zionist state committing a genocide right in front of us for the most unjust, fucking dirty dog reasons. You absolutely annihilate them. Okay. That's point two to name. And there really is only two points. That's what I would do. There's, it's, it's a two-step procedure. It's not rocket science. You just sabotage them. You give them the fucking royal dick from every possible angle. And you don't stop giving it to them. Oh, look over there. There's a cock right in the eye. Oh, look over there. Back another cock right in the eye. Everywhere they look, a cock smack in the eye. Around the clock without end that's their existence eventually after they run out of people to kill they're going to be pretty tired of receiving a cock in their eye from the international community left right and center so at the moment the least i can do is destroy masonry for them it's something i was always going to do that i, I don't just think my intention to destroy freemasonry is uh, based solely on that as a response to what's happening in Palestine but it does actually support them so it's one of those things I do hitting two birds with one stone 10, 20, 50, 100 birds etc it's always I've actually been uh, my stance against Freemasonry has been solid since 2011 and that's the whole reason that the Order of St. Joseph was inaugurated and I'm going to finish that work so uh, my aim there is very clear destroy Freemasonry within the Catholic Church I'm not interested in it outside the Catholic Church but it's probably going to get to the point where if they don't listen I'm going to have to do that and I, I'm able to do that Freemasonry is not immune it's not going to be one of those things where I have bad Islam which was really you know eradicate all terrorists that's all it was this is actually outright Masonry is to be completely taken out of the church we will remove it from the face of the earth. Which one do you want? It's, it's a matter of that. But taking out Freemasonry is to, because Zionism and Freemasonry go hand in hand. Although it does, although the hierarchy is back to Britain, back to London, you can say that the strongest tentacles attached to it are Zionism. And without those, without Zionism, Freemasonry doesn't stand. And without Freemasonry, Zionism doesn't stand. Two sides of the same coin, exactly the same coin different so by taking out Freemasonry by ruining them uh, their overall plans concerning Israel which is a very real thing also disintegrates so it's not just the control that Charles the Masonic King has at the top it's also 
that agenda with Zionists that is shared. Because if he doesn't play ball, the Zionists will actually turn on masonry. Although they are, they are a part of masonry, because Zionism to them is more important. The Israeli state to them is more important than masonry. Masonry to them is just a tool. That's the weak spot in their, in their uh, relationship. So that's one thing I can do. Completely obliterate Freemasonry. Completely annihilate it. And uh, that will have a deep impact. I'm looking at things such as what's happening in Europe. Uh, that's not going to help the establishment, and anything that doesn't help the establishment completely destroys Israel. So that recent move in Parliament of uh, reducing grocery prices will, act, will destroy, will rip the heart out of uh, the people supplying them. It will rip the heart out of the establishment which will rip the heart out of the Israel economy. And I'm still surprised that he actually did that. That is audacious, but so beautiful. And the thing is, if they try to wage an economic war against Malta, even if the USA waged an economic war against Malta, it would lose. Okay. The private wolf is a completely different thing than Malta. You wage an economic war against Malta, even if you're the USA, even if you're China, you're committing suicide. It's that simple. Waging an economic war against the island nation of Malta is the fastest way to guarantee destroying your economy, destroying your entire history, destroying your nation. It's the fastest way to completely obliterate yourself. The Ottoman had to learn that the hard way, just through war. Uh, and obviously today the Turks and the Maltese are good friends, and there's a lot of collaboration going on, but that's just a historical analysis. That's just what happened. It just, it just is what is. You don't want to take on uh, a nation like that economically. You don't even want to take them on militarily. But that's a great move to fuck this Israeli agenda up the arse. It was a great move. And I hope to see more of that. That sabotage-like politicking. Yeah, you want to, you want to murder children and babies to the order of 25,000? Well, here, here's, here's what you cherish the most. Your, your economy, your bank balance. Let's see what you feel like when that's fucking completely torn to bits. Let's see what the ramifications are with that cascading effect uh, into London. That economic cascade when all the people of England are devastated because they know that the prices to all their groceries have been controlled the entire time which is the insinuation from Valletta that they can in some way influence the economy that it was just a whole load of garbage that the economy is just left alone as if there's no control behind it which we all know is a bunch of garbage I'm saying it blunt. There is no such thing as a non-controlled uh, financial environment. That's what the EU are mastering. That's why things are getting better for everybody there. The establishment sold that lie to everybody, and it is such a bad lie. So you can't. The government can control uh, things like that. The government can make cost of uh, living much easier for everybody at the click of a finger. After doing some comprehensive studies, though. And that's the sort of retaliation, that's the sort of uh, just sabotage that you commit against the Israeli state. And you make it very obvious. It's, it's, an, it's an outright act of war. And if you don't like it, you better get used to it and ready for more. That's what you get for killing this X amount of people. So that's what other nation states should be doing against the Israeli state. You want to fuck around with human beings? You want to kill 25,000 persons? Well, we're going to do this to you. We're going to absolutely fucking torture you economically. We're going to lob a cock in your eye every fucking second of the day for, till the end of time. That's what will make Netanyahu, that's what will make the Israeli state 
completely turn around. Not talking to them. Not falling for the mistake of going into their court. Not reasoning with them. Because they are unreasonable. You're making a big mistake by giving them any attention. Actions. No words. 